this is dusty. <laughs> Hi, I'm Matt and this is Not Enough Tech. When it comes to NAS drives or network attached storages, especially built on the Raspberry Pi boards, you have more than one option. Now you can go with a simple design, meaning you're gonna take a Raspberry Pi board and some sort of uh, storage, which could be a USB stick or just a SD card, slap it both together, install whatever software you want, and there you have it, you have a functioning NAS drive. It won't be pretty, but it will work. Another option is to go all in. This is NASPy. It's Raspberry Pi built as well. It has a three different disks that you can hot swap. It has a custom enclosure that I spent way too many days on. But it essentially does exactly the same thing as it would with a naked board. Or you could go somewhere in between with a kit like this. Uh, this is DIY kit from Sun Founder. It, it aims for Raspberry Pi 4 and Sun Founder was kind enough to send me this so I could take a look and share my opinion with you. So in this video we're going to investigate how good a kit like that is. The assembly is very straightforward as long as you follow the manual. Raspberry Pi is sandwiched between the SSD at the bottom and the hat at the top. It's also surrounded by two fans, however, the open case design doesn't really impact heating up of the Raspberry Pi that much. This NAS kit also comes with a SD card which includes Open Media Vault image. It's Open Media Vault 4, so I was really tempted to actually swap it to Open Media Vault 5. And if you're interested in how to do so, just head to the description of this video and you'll find a guide in the link. The display is capable of showing you basic information about your system like IP in resources used, temperature and fan in operation and also disk space available. The screen will refresh every half a second if you wanted to, or you can set to manual mode. Unfortunately, my screen is affected by ghosting. I'm gonna touch on this in a moment. Using the hardware buttons, you can shut down reboot, set the background color, or set the refresh rate on your display. It's very useful to actually have a shutdown button on a NAS drive. Everything is up and running and connected, so it's time to take a look at NAS drive speeds. I'm just messing with you guys. Obviously, I've done already the benchmark, so I won't keep you here forever. Now, when it comes to transfers, there's a couple of factors that you have to take in consideration. First of all, it's going to be a file size. If you have a bigger files that are unable to be cached in RAM, they're going to take longer time than the smaller files. Second of all, if you have a multiple files to transfer, it will increase the transfer times as well. There's no surprises whatsoever when it comes to transfer speeds. Raspberry Pi was capable of saturating the 1 gigabit con uh, connection speed and my transfers were oscillating around 100 megabytes per second. Now the writes were slightly slower, picking at around 90 to 95 megabytes per second and uh, reading speeds from the drive itself, they were picking just over 107 to 110 megabytes per second, which is quite impressive. You know what's great about this kit already, so let's talk about shortcomings. First of all, I'd like to address the elephant in the room, and I don't mean me. I mean this uh, USB 3.0 to SATA cable. It's massive, it shouldn't be that big, and I wish they could do something else with it, include the PCB, or whatever it takes to get rid of this big and bulky cable because the overall design of this box is really nice I like it it's just this cable destroys that image another problem that I would like to address is the e-ink display I have no problem of them actually using e-ink for this application even though the refresh rate might not be great I think it's pretty cute However, there is no scrubbing menu, which means if you're going to display one of the screens for prolonged periods of time, you will see ghosting. Now, this is not an LCD screen, it's not susceptible to burning in of the image, so you don't have to worry about, 
but in order to restore the pixels you have to flash it to black and white a couple of times and this option and menu is missing. Now this is something that could be patched up easily uh, and I hope to see this improvement very soon. To conclude this video, if you want to dip your feet into network attached storage, a DIY kit like this might not be a bad choice, especially if you don't have a time to build a box like that, which requires a lot of time and commitments to get it finished. Now you can start with a single drive with a kit like this, and you can stack additional drives if you want to. Overall, it's been a fun experience, and I didn't realize how helpful it is to see the IP of your network attached storage on the display. So tell me guys, have you built your own NAS already? Are you tempted by a Raspberry Pi 4 and 1 gigabit connectivity? Let me know in the comments to this video. In the description of this video you're going to, fi you're going to find the links for this uh, NAS kit from Soundfinder. So if you like what you see, go ahead, click that through and you'll bag yourself one of these. You probably know I don't have a posting schedule, so if you want to know what I'm doing next, it's best to follow me on social media of your choice. That way you're gonna get an update whenever a new article is available. Obviously you know how to use YouTube, a lot of other channels already taught you that. As for now, I'm gonna say my bye bye. Take care. Bye! Nasberry. <laughs> Ooh, it's a Nasberry. Well, technically it is.